you know, um, sometimes I feel I get a little unstuck at, um, you know, if there are areas with pressure pain, mm -hmm. um, how to relieve, you know, how to relieve, what relieves, what I, I, mean, I know you mention, uh, you know, uh, once pretty often I know of, you know, like the gallbladder 26 is released by a kidney seven. Mm -hmm. But other other areas, like for, say, for instance, uh, mostly on the back, I have to say now, uh, I just, you know, I kind of like to needle an area and then it's very painful and I'm kind of thinking, oh, what can I do to, to relieve the pressure pain? Yeah. We'll say like even with the gallbladder 26, um, if you're going to um, <clears throat> clear it with kidney seven, mm -hmm. and then if kidney seven is painful, you know, like what kind of any strategies, like of how you might kind of, you know, help with clearing the painful reflexes. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, so you have, um, well, let, let's address it as if they're two different, well, there are, in some ways, they're a little bit like two different questions, but they're, they're not, they're, they're the same. But so in, you, you're absolutely correct. In the back, we don't have as interesting a map. And the reflexes and the treatment points in the back are, are kind of the same. In the abdomen, generally, we, we don't say, you know, so for example, if you say below kidney 16 is adrenal reflex, right side, stomach 26, 27 is lung reflex, digestive reflex, you know, things like that. We don't say go ahead and needle them. We say go ahead and release them. It's very rare that we needle the abdomen, especially the reflex. Um, the one exception of that, is left stomach 26, 27 oketsu. If you find oketsu and you find right side occipital pain, then you release the oketsu with liver four, lung five on the left side, then you needle the oketsu. That's the one big exception to you do not needle reflexes. Okay, but it's a very particular situation, you know, okay. that, you know, you you've released, first of all, you've released the reflex first and then you needle it because you're actually trying to treat something else with it. On the back, primarily most of the things that are reflexes are also gonna be used for treatment. So if we say, for example, T11, T12 is sugar reflex, T5 is a Shen reflex, T7 is autonomic nervous system reflex, you know, things like osmoidus and 11 on the right side is digestion reflex, on the left it's cardiac reflex. We mean you will find something there and we, you, we expect to be able to needle it unless it's, it's too weird. It's, it, well, unless it, it's too strong. So if there's just something weird on it, if it's puffy, that's totally okay. But if it's painful, then you start looking to release. So the general things that will tend to release the back from a, you know, quote unquote mechanically would be uh, do two, sacroiliac, small intestine nine ten, opening the back, um, UB thirty five, and possibly you can add to it do fifteen, do sixteen. So those those are things that kind of dogmatically you can go. Now the other thing what you can do on the back is um, now I'm talking at this point primarily about the watos you know, the spine area. If you have an area, say you found that um, T3 is very painful and you want to release it. What you, can do, so, what you can do is you can go to another area of the spine that is one of the shifting areas of the curve. So that will be T11, T12, or T5. T5, since we said T3, T5 may feel a little bit too close. Okay. So you go for, and L5 is another good option. So you go to say to L, you press L5, you press it down towards the sacrum and see if T3 gets released. You go to T11, T12, and you try that and see if T3 gets released. So you're using other areas of the spine to modulate the rest of the spine. Uh, there are some exceptions to, to that. I mean, there are some places where a reflex, we actually have like dogmas for releasing. So right side T7 to T9, reflecting liver, whether it's on the bladder line or on the watos, you can usually release with right, with left side, sorry, left side UB35. Okay, so that's a standard liver treatment. 
um, left, anything left that you think might be cardiac, so whether it's left small intestine um, 11 or left uh, outer UB line, be besides the fact that those tend to get released with do 2 especially the outer UB line, not so much small intestine 11 because it reflects autonomic nervous system. But if you think it's cardiac specifically, then check bladder 60 on the left side especially. If it's painful, do bladder 66 to 67. If it's not painful, needle bladder 66 upwards. Okay, So those are the two kind of like big exceptions um, to the rule. Another point that uh, often can have a good chance of releasing things on the back is uh, bladder 52. Yeah, 52, uh, outside the kidney shoe, uh, needle towards the spine. Because what it does is it gives a support to the waist, which means it gives support to the rest of the spine, even if they're lying down at that point. You know? um, so that's kind of like from a quote unquote mechanical perspective. Now, from the perspective, you know, like you're saying, say I want to release gallbladder 26, and I go for kidney seven, and the person goes, ouch. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to needle kidney seven. What do I do? So now what, what I do, since I don't, I mean, I, I could have ways to, you know, I basically start mobilizing my imagination, okay? But before I do that, the, the first thing I'm going to do is, what else is in the medical history? What other findings do they have? What is it? What is the? Um, what is it leading me towards? In other words, so I got led to kidney seven because they have gallbladder twenty six. But what else do they have? And if I start utilizing that, maybe I, you know, maybe those points that are going to be, um, you know, let's say they have. REN 15 and REN 17, so, you know, that's supposed to be a spleen 3 pericardium 4, I mean, whatever, you know, and they have anxiety or whatever, I'm just making stuff up. So I try my treat, my anxiety treatment, spleen 3 pericardium, and see if that releases kidney 7. Okay. Now, here there's no guarantee, this is not going by the book, so that, you know, it might or might not do it. In other words, the kidney 7 might be painful because of a particular issue around kidney seven, or it might be part of the general picture of the constitution of the person. So sometimes releasing the, the so-called constitutional issues gives the body enough capacity to overcome the kidney seven, just like any other symptom. If I treat the underlying constitution, maybe the problem area gets released. It's a bit of a maybe, but it works often enough. So I use the same strategy for a treatment point that's painful. Now you've chosen a particular um, example that that is not as uh, well. Actually, it, 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 I have so you you have two other options. In this case, you can't use the metal water option because kidney seven is already the metal point. You can try the the water point, kidney ten, for example, and see if it releases kidney seven. In other words, you can go anywhere else on the channel and see if you can do that, or you can try the jue. You know, so underneath liver three, that would be the joy of Xiaoyi and the joy of kidney. So that, that's another way of looking at it. So either go and look at, so you have three options for the kidney seven, basically, in terms of thinking. To think of what is it in, that, that makes kidney seven painful, okay? Um, so one of the things, so because kidney seven, it, it, and it's called, um, full you to, re to recover the flow, and it has something to do with the chui, with the ability to press down in order to lift up. So things are falling down onto kidney seven. So maybe it's the kidney channel falling. So you can try and establish the chui, the capacity to push down and lift up, to, to, un, un, to, to recover the uncovering of the flow, whatever they, that were, you know, by using things like inner yin, UB35, um, side gallbladder 27 and see if any of these sort of <clears throat> lift the channel up. So that's what, so that's kind of like you're taking a treatment point and you're saying why, you're trying to figure out why it's painful, diagnostically speaking. The next is to uh, use the metal water of the channel, especially if you happen to find the fire point painful as well. And the third one is to use the joy. 
and sorry, actually the middle and the water and the two I would put in the same category. That's um, in, a, in a way, even though they're different categories. And the third category is to go against the diagnosis. I was led to a treatment point through my diagnosis, you know, considering the abdomen and the history, et cetera, et cetera. Now I got stuck in this treatment point. I need to resolve it. So now I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone, go against my other points for that diagnosis and see if they're going to release the, tr the stubborn treatment point. So those are the three kind of ways of looking at it from, you know, mm -hmm. that, that I can sort of like list yeah. and, and, and create a dogma out of. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, the other thing is, so for example, in the case of kidney seven, um, and again, you kind of want to look at how, how did you arrive at gallbladder 20, what, what pulled you to gallbladder 26, for example. Um, you know, usually it would be a, a structural issue. You know, they have back pain or knee pain or something. Try other points that are supposed to release the back pain or the knee pain. Okay, for example, stomach to your stomach 41 see what effect that has on kidney seven. Now that's a bit of an unfair example because the stomach chi points and stomach 41 specifically are a little bit like joy points and are also related to the chui. Because if you, especially stomach 41, it, stomach 41 has to do with how you use your ankle. So it's a mechanical, um, it's, gonna, it, it's gonna have a mechanical relationship to kidney seven regardless. Um, so, you know, you just keep, you know, using your, you know, so go against what was it that gallbladder 20, what made gallbladder 26 important here? And it's uh, basically, it's, it's quite cool going back to your so-called diagnosis um, and, and go and treat that without the kidney seven. I understand the kidney seven is the point I want to use, but I need to resolve kidney seven first. Or at least I, I would like I would like to resolve kidney seven first, and then I can possibly use it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> now, if, if you really can't, um, there are situations where you no know, matter what you do, you know you're jumping through all the hoops you you they've, they've ever been invented, and kidney seven is still painful. Look, it happens. Um, what you could do is just put a north magnet on kidney seven and, and, and say, okay, I've done the best I could. Mm. And, and use the point as a magnet point. You know, is it the ideal situation? Well, maybe not, but it's about, you know, this is what you can do at that point. You know, you stretch your capacity, you stretch your imagination to, to whatever, and at some point you you ran out of ideas. Yeah. Well, then you, your choice is needle it, which you, I tend not to want to do. Or, okay, what else can I do? Well, if I put a magnet on, north facing, there's a, you know, I, it, it has a chance of doing something, dispersing the, the pain at kidney seven and using kidney seven therapeutically. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is there a logic? Have we have, why kidney seven, say for instance, uh, releases gallbladder twenty six? <laughs> <laughs> Logic is very um, dependent on one's perspective. So yeah, I mean, I can give you a number of different logics possibly. So um, kidney seven. So okay, so there's a, if there's a twist that you know, so it's related to dimai, and the dimai is basically you. You have two ways to look at dimai. You can say that from um, quote, unquote, more philosophical or organic phenomenon, we would claim in TCM that it belongs to the spleen because it has to do with extra dampening. Okay, it, it, the dye is the accumulator, it is where the, the, the dampness is accumulated from, which means that it's, it's a result of a spleen that's not transforming dampness, you know. But if you're looking at the dye as a channel, Meaning, and, and if you're looking at dimai as a primitive channel, as opposed to um, the way it's described currently, which is from gallbladder 26 down to, 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 the, um, um, to the pubic bone, which is a 
possibly a bit of an ideolo ideology, which is basically a way to siphon the fluids out through the bladder. You know, I mean, so the, the channel describes something that maybe now I'm not saying that there is no fascial connection there. There is between, in, you know, in the England groove, but, um, you know, but if you're looking at the daimai as, as, a, as the one axis in the body that's um, horizontal, then it really should be going from kidney 16 or from REN8 to do 4 You know, it's, it's supposed to be, you know, and that's definitely a kidney phenomenon because you have kidney 16, which is a break in the, in the kidney channel because from kidney 16, one channel goes down, one channel goes up of the kidney channel. Uh, then you have um, gallbladder gall 26 is not necessarily kidney, but gallbladder 25 certainly is kidney. It's the, if it's the mu of the kidney. And then you have the shoe of the kidney. So that line of the navel of, of L2, which is the line of dimine, is, is related to the kidney. Okay. Then another explanation can be that kidney seven has to do with, um, well, so both kidney seven and heart seven are points that have to do with those twistings. So for example, heart is, they, they resonate. Uh, so not heart seven, heart three. Kidney seven and heart three. Um, you know, have a similar phenomenon, although uh, for gallbladder 26 specifically, kidney seven would be a better choice than heart three, but there are two points that if you're gonna use heart, heart three, you may wanna do kidney seven first, for example. So you can say that it's the axis of the Xiaoyin, you know, the, the inner, so if you have a twist, you wanna build your core around which the twist can center. So it, you, you're kind of trying to build up the central core by using the kidney so that the twist can readjust. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I think we lost Camille. <laughs> All right. But anything else? Yes. Um, uh, I was just wondering as well about how you might um, treat like the weak pancreas. Um, it's just somebody that I'm um, thinking, you know, has some digestive type issues and a lot of bloating like above the navel. Uh, and it, so it sounds a bit like that maybe the pancreas is a bit weak. So it could be pancreas, it could be other things, you know, like it could be actually a small intestine. But if it's pancreas, it will reflect, supposedly there'll be some puffiness between the two stomach 21s, you know, so the more extreme phenomenon we, we call there's a beam across stomach 21. And basically the treatment for that is adrenal treatment, kidney six and 27, or another kidney point plus 27, um, plus spleen five, spleen five moxa, it would be very important for that. However, if it is, and I would, and this is one of the cases where adrenal treatment gets added, lung five. There are some people who say, you know, that they automatically add lung five to any adrenal treatment um, because, you know, it's the water point on the metal and metal is the mother of water. Therefore, kidney, you know, it, it's, you know, lung five is a good support point. Um, the thing is, if you keep going against support points all the time, uh, you're going to run out of, you know, it's like, you, you know, that's great when somebody really just needs adrenal and you're adding lung five. So you did your adrenal, say kidney six and 27 or kidney seven, 10 and 27 plus lung five and you call it quits. That's the end of the treatment. That's the only thing that needs to be addressed and it resolves everything. Fine. Go ahead and add the supporting point of lung as, as lung five. But since with most patients, you usually have two or three ideas that you need to go against. You know, they're adrenal, plus there's some hormonal thing, plus there's maybe a sugar imbalance. Maybe, you know, there's a few things that need to be looked at. So if you, if you take one idea and you, you add to it all your supporting points, by the time you move on to your second idea, you ran out, you know, you ran out of needles sort of thing. So it, it's not really all that useful. But in the case of the of weak pancreas, because it is, if it really is an inflammation and pancreatitis, you really want to reinforce the, 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 the cortisol action, the, the, the inflammatory clearing capacity. 
So that's where lung five would be more useful. Now, in your case, where you're saying it's a digestive issue, et cetera, I think it could be pancreas, but you know, maybe it's small intestine. You know, that's another option. So um, small intestine is, you know, well, you can address it through, you know, because in TCM, small intestine is really um, relegated to the spleen. You know, it, it's one, it's, it's a full organ that's sort of under the control of the spleen, even though it's not, doesn't match it. Um, you know, like, you know, in terms of uh, external internal, because it's the stomach that, that matches the spleen. But both the large intestine and the small intestine are kind of under the control of the spleen from a TCM perspective. So you can look at spleen points and see what you can get. Uh, you can look in terms of this small intestine channel, you can look at small intestine one and two together, or you can look at small intestine three. Either, either one and two or small intestine three and see what it releases on the abdomen and the back. You know, specifically say small intestine 11 on the right side. Um, so that's another option. Um, another option, a lot of digestive issues um, can be resolved through the frontal hairline. Okay, so whether you take, you know, anywhere from do 24 uh, to stomach 8. So remember that the stomach channel ends, goes through stomach 8 and ends at do 24. Okay, so this whole line, whether it's called bladder 13, bladder 3, 4, whatever it is, and, and you know, this line can wor work fairly well for digestion, especially if there are emotional issues involved, because this line is definitely has a, um, an emotional you know, a Shen, you know, you have Ben Shen, the root of the Shen, you have uh, Shen Ting, the, the courtyard of the Shen, you have a bunch of Shen style things. And also to remember that um, in a small intestine channel, you have small intestine three, Ho Shi, and uh, small intestine two, um, uh, Tian Gu. So it's before and after, before the valley and after the ravine. And the only other place you have before and after is around Du 20. Do 19 before the vertex, um, uh, Qian Ding, and um, do to 21, or Ho Ding. So there is a clear relationship between this side of the palm and the top of the head. And if you go further down, the Tang people, for example, use small intestine four for low back pain. Okay. So, um, the small intestine channel on, on some, in some ways you can say is maybe more a Tai Yang channel than a small intestine. You know, that's what one of the places where you don't see a strong relationship. But the small intestine one, two, and small intestine three do relate. And then you can see how this small intestine three and, um, and the possibility of using the do or the, the frontal uh, hairline for small intestine issues kind of, um, start to make, you know, possibly make sense, you know, as, as, a, as a morphology of the body, or however one would call it. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, the other thing is, don't forget, you know, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit like the TCM liver invading the spleen. The liver can be involved in, in something like this, especially with upper GI stuff. So if they have bloating, it is, it's, you know, I would also check the liver, which is in the area you're checking also to begin with. But if you're noticing, oh my God, you know, like the, the, the right diaphragm is very tight, mm -hmm. you know, then you're going, oh, I wonder if, if all of this is coming from the liver. Liver issues, yeah. Okay. Okay. And of course it can be, this, you know, it can still be stomach, you know, literally, you know, the, the stomach itself, if the stomach is, um, because, you know, you're suggesting that, that uh, you know, the way you describe it, you're stressing the bloating is already below the stomach, that it's not in the chest, that it's about the navel, but it's below the ribs, is kind of what I, I got yeah. from it. So that will tend not to be so much stomach issue, but it can see, the, you know, it's still worth checking. Yeah. You know, but yeah, you're, 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 I would say your your three bigger options that are small intestine, pancreas is definitely one, and and liver. Those are the three that I would look at into. Yeah, great, thank you. And notice that all three of them basically, uh, actually, 
that true? I'm just trying to think about it. Yeah, yeah that is true. <laughs> All three of them, um, you know, basically meet at, you know, there's a um, meet at the old sphincter. You know, so there, you know, there, it's a very common phenomenon that people have, you know, kind of an undescribed, you can't attribute it to necessarily one organ. You know, so these are people who like often will have gallstones, but you remove the stones and they're still, they're still an inflammation. And then eventually they say, no, oh, no, 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 that was a, it, it was a pancreas, pancreas inflammation. You know, there, there's, there's a confusion in that area. It's not like so clear cut that you can dissect one organ and say, oh, it's a weak, pan it's inflamed pancreas. No, it's an inflamed gallbladder. No, it's an inflamed gallbladder duct. No, it's a small intestine. They're all kind of mushed together in, in that area. You know, there's not as good, of course, as organs, they exist separately. But, you know, if there's any sort of inflammatory process there, it's going to like possibly invade everything in, in the area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this <clears throat> person did have actually some problem with gallstones. Then so, I would start, yeah. you know, given that, that if that's the medical history, I, you know, it's, it's like, go for the thing that's most obvious and see what it does. So the first thing is, treat it as, you know, see if you can treat it as if it was gallstones, meaning gallbladder 43, 44 on the right side, Sanja 1, 2 on the right side see what mileage you're getting out of it, mm. you know? And if you're only getting 25% worth of release in, mm. in abdominal findings and not just on the right side of, you know, if everywhere, see, so for, okay. So how do you know that that, you know, okay, the gallbladder is really the root of the problem. At least you, you know, you, how can you get some confidence in being able to declare it? You're trying it. If you try and go right side gallbladder 43, 44, right side Sanja 1 and 2, and bang, all the abdominal findings are gone. Everything on the left side also gets better. Okay, the neck on the left side is better. Ever, you know, then you sort of go, oh my God, you know, gallbladder is really essential for this person because the moment I tap into it and open something up in the gallbladder, everything is able to relax and function better. Yeah, I, I actually did, Abby, I did um, the gallbladder, and the, the last two, and the 43 and 4 is it, on the gallbladder yes. channel, and um, this person uh, came back, the next time they came back, they said that they had an experience of, um, woke up during the night, mm -hmm. and um, got um, this feeling of really reflux type of feeling and brought up a lot of bile mm. and um, they actually uh, said they made themselves sick because it was just kind of like sitting <laughs> in the chest so I kind of um, oh, I didn't wow. do the goal I didn't do the the, the fire point and the, the next time you know I just thought maybe it was too much or something but I mean it was the treatment for the gallstones Okay. And, so, and no, no, it happens, you know, sometimes, you know, you're doing, okay. So a few things can, oh, okay. So you know that this, this particular treatment right now, you, you do not want to touch that treatment because it's apparently, it triggers something. It's it, whatever it's doing, it's too strong. The person's unable to handle it. So you have to look at why. So let's approach it from a different perspective. Let's still go for the gallstones. Just for the sake of it. But just, just to add, every, sorry to interrupt you, but just to add, the, um, she also had um, said she suffered from constipation. So it's mm -hmm. also the constipation point. So I kind of figured it was... <laughs> um, right, right, right. Add stomach 44, 45 on the left side and, you know, she's all set for the yeah. Heart. yeah. So let's, now let's see if we can, we can dissect it a little bit differently. You know, I mean, this is the problem with dogma. You know, you, you go, okay, gallstones, here's the dogma. And then the patient goes, well, your dogma sucks. <laughs> you know, your dogma is very bilitic, bilitic or whatever. <laughs> you know, it, it just isn't going to work for them. So then you, you just have to like, okay. So gallstones usually, I mean, there are, you know, they can come from, the, you know, but it's, it's usually an obstruction of a sphincter. The, the things are accumulating as stones because there's not good enough flow. 
into the bile duct. Okay, so it's a duct, it's a sphincter. Anything that has to do with a sphincter, I would look at the SCM and release the SCM. So you have a way of basically going, okay, look at Sanjiao 8. So not Sanjiao 1, 2, not Gaubat 43, 44, but look at this at Sanjiao to release this. Look at releasing this first. And see what you can get out of that. I usually do that. I actually usually does have something on the SCM. Okay. So um, so leave the gobbler, and then the other thing that maybe, be, you know, spleen three might be very useful. Number one, it is OD. Number two, it's muscular, you know. So just walk around the, pro you know, you, you're just kind of setting yourself up. I've tried to like go directly against the problem that backfired. Okay, be now either there is something in the person that I'm not, I haven't seen or I haven't considered well enough, I have to take easier back doors until yeah. something, because if you're trying to release the, you know, the gallbladder, you're pushing against it, but it's all tight, you know, you know, as, as a, we'll call it a sphincter problem in general. In other words, the, the nervous system is locking things up. You can push the gallbladder all you want, but all you're creating is a problem because the, there is something else that needs to be released. So just take a bunch of back doors, experiment with those, and keep going. Or, you know, go through other doors altogether. In other words, okay, gallbladder sounded like a great idea, but I'm not able to utilize it for right now. What else are you coming with? And let me do that. Release that. And then if, if they don't have symptoms, then you can reintroduce the gallbladder 43, 44 again, just for, you know, as an experiment, once you feel a little bit more com confident that, or, and the patient has more confidence than you maybe, so that you say, listen, let's try this again. Let's see if you can cope with it. If your body is willing to, to deal with it. The other thing is, so you have, you can do the gallbladder from the back, which may not be as strong. Yeah. He's doing T10, T2, and small intestine 11 all on the right side. So, so you, you just experiment, with, just because the dogma says that this is the treatment for gallstones or gallbladder problems, doesn't mean it's going to work for your patient. Yeah. It means it has a chance. But in your case, the ch that chance is actually, you know, it, it, it's, it's an overstimulation or it does something. And so back off. It doesn't matter. It's fine. You know, there's, pl there's always plenty of possibilities. Yeah. Uh, now, the other thing is inflammatory things on the, um, on the right side. Uh, sometimes go about a 37 needled upwards could do a good job. That's another option. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks. So there's a few things to think about. Yeah, and then oh, and then you have like the more standard um, TCM ways of treating the gallbladder, which is you know, you gallbladder 34 or, or stomach 36 or both, or the stomach chi line. You know, you, there are some more options. Yeah. You know, just because they don't exist in my dogma doesn't mean that they don't necessarily work. Yeah. Grace, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. All right. Camille, you're back with us. I am. I don't know what happened, but I lost about five minutes. So I'll just listen like to that. the I'll listen to the uh I'll listen to the uh the recording. recording. So All right. <laughs> it was a very a really rich, interesting discussion. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Um, just, I was going to ask Abby as well if uh, you might, <clears throat> maybe quicker if you can think of them, uh, just maybe to summarize what you actually needle against the channel. Um, only on the bladder, generally speaking, against the channel will be on the gallbladder. Gallbladder yeah. on the leg will always be against the channel. And I... all, all gallbladder points. Oh, no, 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 no. Gallbladder on the lower leg. Okay, no uh, not not on the foot necessarily. 
Okay. Foot doesn't, but on the leg, you know, gallbladder 39, gallbladder 37, uh, not gallbladder 34, gallbladder 34, I do straight in. Um, gallbladder 31, I do, it's not so much that I do it against the channel as much as I needle it slightly upwards because I'm interested in getting, you know, I usually use gallbladder 31 for the uh, piriformis. Yeah. So I'm kind of directing it there. Um, and bladder 60 is against the channel. Um, yeah, so lower leg from the knee down, from the knee to the ankle, bladder and gallbladder are against the channel. But the ones that, the, the, the gallbladder is really obvious, you know, because it's like flat against the skin, against the channel. The <clears throat> bladder ones, if, for example, bladder 58, I do slightly upwards, which is against the channel, but it's slightly upwards. Bladder 60, I do totally upwards. Um, only other point that I can think of um, that uh, I would do against the channel um, is to some extent is liver two. And I needle it toward basically because, because you're trying to, it's a, you know, it, it, it's, um, you're trying to reduce it. Okay, it's the fire point. It's, it's the daughter point. It's a reduction point, quote unquote, or whatever. Um, and so I, you know, so I do it and I actually, I, I needle it back towards liver one, which means I'm directing it slightly towards the big toe because supposedly the point liver two is between the big toe and the second toe. Okay? But, you know, if you're going to go backwards, you know, if you're going to go towards the toe, you're going to have to choose one toe or the other. And I actually think that liver two is on the big toe. It's, it's on the it's in the hollow of the bone of the big toe. It's not like in the middle of nowhere there. <laughs> you know, yeah. it actually it has an affinity to the big toe. So that's a point, but again, it's not flat against the skin. It's like, you know, 15 degrees towards liver one or something. You know, and that's not a point I do a lot. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, sometimes there are situations where um you know you, you you have liver, you know, you, you want to release um, something in the liver channel, you do liver two against the channel, you know, um, for example, with eye issues, you can live, needle liver two against the channel, just shake the needle out, and then you take it out. The one time when I, I do leave the needle in is a combination of liver one, liver two, which is for testicles. If you have a supposedly the let me see if I remember this correctly, because, you know, I found that the dogma is not totally correct. I believe, well, one side gets liver one, the other side gets liver two. And the question I always have is, is it the bad testicle side that gets liver two or the good testicle side that gets liver two? And the thing is, I remember having experimented with it originally and having decided you, you can tell in advance just because which testicle is the problem, you have to try, because what it's doing is it's balancing the liver channel. Liver one is like a tonification point and liver two is a reducing point. So it's, it's kind of like taking the scales on the liver channel mm. um, and adjusting them. And my experience is I can't rely on, on the dogma to the, to the point that I don't even remember what the dogma is. Okay. I just try liver two, liver one, one side and flip it. If it doesn't work, yeah. I did have a patient one time that actually had uh, testicle removed. But yeah, I, um, they had I, cancer. Yeah, uh, I used to do liver four more. Mm -hmm. um, see that he had. Um, <clears throat> I remember he had a lot of inguinal pain as well. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, you, it's something you. You make choices as to which, you know, what, you know, what, what seems to work best. I mean, it's totally possible that liver four is, is the best point for someone, you know, even though, yes, it's a testicular problem and blah, 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 blah. But so it should be, you know, the book says liver one, liver two, but, you know, the patient says liver four. You know, it's so hard to tell. Um, I mean, liver five is another you know, the, the, the lower channel of the liver, which liver five is, goes, you know, goes into the genitals. Mm -hmm. You know, like how, who's, you know, you just have to figure out what's, what's the, what model is going to work on this patient. I mean, we have a bunch of models and ideas about how the body is, 
you know, we have a manual, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and we have a bunch of meridians and we could just go, I mean, you know, because you can say, oh, no, that's really not. There's, there's a different meridian that does this. And, you know, there's always a way to, to make reasons why a certain point could work. Yeah. Um, and you just make the best you can out of it. I mean, you know, if you if you talk to some of the the, the tongue people, they'll tell you, oh, needle around the eyes for testicles. Mm. You know, that's their um, that's their way of seeing the body. Mm. So you know, there's just no one way. You know, there's just zillions of ways to try and solve the puzzle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, <clears throat> that's great. Thank you, Levy. Uh, I have a couple questions about the testicles. Yes. Um, one, might you use that for male fertility issues? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't have that great um, of experience in that. Um, and actually, somebody just asked me that this, this week. Um, you know, so I, I, but honestly, I don't fully know. This is. If there is a damage to the testicle, in other words, you know, if, if there is a fertility issue where they're saying, you know, because this treatment is meant that liver one, liver two is meant for what to, to, to balance one testicle, the issue in one testicle. So if you're saying your sperm count is too low because your testicles are, I don't know, they're too flowery, they're too blah, blah. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't understand. I don't know enough about the terminology in that field. Um, then, then yes, if it's one, to, but you know, people are not going to have, um, people are not going to have a fertility issue because one testicle, you know, it, if one testicle doesn't work quite right, if there's an issue with one testicle, the chances are they're still fertile. Okay. Because this, you know, do you know what I'm saying? The sperm comes from, yeah, both, yeah. you know, so there, there's no need for, so this is really more like quote unquote a mechanical thing, but it's something to, to experiment with. I would say with fertility issue, I mean, I would check that any congestion in the upper leg, okay, in the inner thigh, you know, uh, towards the inguinal group, I would check the inguinal and I would check the SCM. Male urogenital issues are highly correlated to the SCM. Really? Oh. Yeah. Well, okay, think about it this way. Um, in the, the autonomic nervous system, we say you, you, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic are antagonistic of each other. Right, that's like the the phrase. That's like standard uh, physiology of 1950s, you know, textbooks sort of thing. Although we, we, it's not totally agreed on. There is one exception to to your either sympathetic or you're in parasympathetic mode, and that exception is in sex, and especially for men. Okay, there has to be a parasymp. There has to be a you know, especially for men, there has to be both a parasympathetic component in, in sex in reproduction, but there has to be a sympathetic component because, you know, the, the, there has to be blood flow in order to, cre to create the capacity of the sperm to go out, okay? So men's, men's urogenital problems are incredibly, very strongly correlated to their state of the nervous system. M women's also, but you know, with women, we say, oh, it's anxiety, you know, you're too anxious, you're too, you know, the, there's all sorts of little phrases around it. But physiologically, with men, the connection is way, way stronger. Now, the other thing is you can think about is stomach nine and kidney 11 are two um, corresponding points. They're both going against horizontal uh, bones, the hyoid bone in stomach nine and the pubic bone in the case of kidney 11. And they're the beginning and the end of the REN channel, so they reflect each other. Okay. So releasing stomach nine and possibly even needling it for male problems, um, whether, whether it's uh, um, bladder, bladder ure ureal problems um, or, or sexual genital problems is, is a big deal. Um, the other thing is I would look at uh, liver nine area, inner yin liver nine, um, because, well, liver nine is called uh, bao yin, 
the 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 wrapping of the yin so that can be you can call it the uterus or the bladder or you can suggest that it refers to the uterus of the bladder or something like that um so the, the i would look much more at that um then i would look at liver one liver two and then of course you have your your standard um kidney ideas you know depending i mean right. i i just don't know i don't have enough um knowledge of male actually or female i mean fertility is not my field in general not for women not for men um with men i tend to think that you know it's often and you have to distinguish when, whether it is just like with women i guess um, whether it's a mechanical obstruction or whether it's an organic weakness. There's an organic non-production. Is it coming from a congestion of in the routing? Or is it, you know, like, for example, do they have low testosterone? And, you know, there's just no production. Right. right. So, you know, so this liver one, liver two doesn't quite... Um, it would not be the first thing I would think of. Okay. Okay. So I have another question related to that treatment because I'd never heard that treatment before. Quite oh. interesting. Mm -hmm. um, um, would you ever use it in any circumstance on a woman, for example, like a, a Bartholin gland cyst or something a like what? that? A what kind of cyst? A Bartholin gland cyst. What are those? It, the bar the Bartholin gland is is um, um, what produces the the vaginal fluid, and it's not uncommon, particularly as women age, that the the gland gets blocked, and it yeah. it can create a cyst. Sometimes it even will get infected, and there'll be an abscess. Like it's supposed to be the size of a pea, and I've I've seen one case where it was the size of a large zucchini. And Whoa. it was so painful, and the person had to go to the emergency room. Now, and where is this the, gland located exactly? Uh, it's just right, right on the edge of the labia. Okay. You know, here's what I would say for a cyst. I would look at liver eight. Liver eight is the main point for cysts and accumulations. And I would possibly look at liver five again. You know, which is like anti-inflammatory. The liver one, liver two, the point of the liver one, liver two is this is an external genital. I mean, I, by the way, just to say, you know, as you asked if I would do it for women, I have done it for women and I've kind of joked with, you know, it's like, oh, I'm treating your testicles now. Um, because what it is, is it's about an imbalance between the two sides. Well, usually it is on one side and this is external. Okay. No, no, no. Fine. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah. I, you know, um, uh, my uh, ten, so I, it would not. It would certainly, you know, the way I say it is like, look, you take an idea, you run with it, right? Until you know, there's some obstruction that says, hey, this is a stupid idea. Where the hell did you come up with that? From? <laughs> you know, but you, you know, I mean, it happens to me all the time. You know, I, yeah. like I dream of something, and you know, it's like, oh, this is kind of interesting. It's cute. I try it on a patient, and sometimes it works really well, and sometimes it's like what the hell is this bullshit about? You know, it's like you, your imagination is like totally false. So you, you're not going to know until you try it. Sometimes you try, try it. Sometimes you try it on one patient, you'll never try it again. Sometimes you'll try it on three or four and then you go, hey, not so useful. Sometimes you'll try it on a few and then eventually you'll figure out a little, some subtleties that make it work. Um, so all I can say is that it's not the thing that I, you know, the, the problem you're there, the cyst issue, I would look more at liver eight. The thing about the liver one, liver two, it's about balancing the two sides of the liver channel. And because with men, what happens, there's a part of the liver channel because the testicles are outside, well, they're not outside the body, but you know what I'm saying, they're external. Um, it's an external genital, you know, is, you know, so unlike with women where it's in the abdomen, the liver one, liver two, it's about this balance of uh, something. So for example, the, when, the reason why I used it on the woman, there was an imbalance in walking. You know, so think, for example, I mean, I, this is a little odd. Um, if a man had orchitis, and they had a huge testicle, that leg is going to go to the side quite a bit. Okay, if it's large enough, if, if they have a large zucchini size, you know, for example. So that's when that treatment of liver one, liver two is about, it's about a mechanical 
um, use of the of the pelvic of the pelvic region or the legs or something like that. It's not so much about organically um, dealing with the testicles or or tissue of that nature. Um, so that's why I'm thinking liver eight. If it, if there's an accumulation and a cyst, either liver eight or liver five make more sense to me. So what made you turn to this treatment for the woman who had an imbalance in walking? What about the case made you? I honestly don't, I don't recall because you know, you know oh, what happens okay. is when the joke, yeah. when, when the joke is I'm treating your testicles it kind of overtakes the actual treatment, you know, like, you know, it's been uh, years. <laughs> so the, what I remember is, oh, I was treating this woman's testicles um, as opposed to why the hell I was treating her. <laughs> so okay. there was not, there was nothing male like, involved here it wasn't a woman with a beard or anything you know none of the you know the, there was nothing male related to this this is you know it was something to do with mechanics of a pelvic shift that wasn't in the sacrum you know and i honestly don't remember so now i'll start bullshitting so it's you know i i, I really can't i can't say okay. that. fair enough so but but it's something to do with the mechanics it you know um, because what happens is the testicles, if you think about the testicles for men, they're the lowest part of their torso and they're balancing their torso because they're external. Just like, you know, it's, it's as if you had two weights dangling. Now I know I'm making it, I'm exaggerating the, the, the phenomenon in order, but, but they're actually balancing the way your torso is, 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 um, uh, balanced just like just like think of it as a scale okay thank you you're welcome sorry I wish I had a better answer no it's it's I understand completely believe me <laughs> oh, oh the other point that can can reach the area is called about a 31 to, to, to reach the, the, the cervix vagina area is especially the further out it goes, you know, the, the more external it is um, to, towards the opening, gallbladder 31 is another good option. So if you think about it, you have gallbladder 31 on one side and liver nine on, on the other side, you sort of like, it's almost like you're squeezing the leg to get something um, to, to the top of the leg in between the two legs. Okay, thank you. Anything else? No, not from me, Abby. <laughs> no, that was, that was a great session, Abby. Thank you. You're most welcome. So enjoy your week. Uh, I hope it doesn't get, I hope it gets cooler in California. <laughs> God. Yeah. Thank you. Probably it'll go to 20 below zero, but <laughs> uh, I, I, do, I don't think it will, not in California. <laughs> Here it does, but <laughs> uh, we'll try not to have any more calamities for a while. Yeah, that would be nice. So, yeah. all right. Well, enjoy your week and I'll see you guys next Monday. Both of you enjoy. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.